Hello, I'm Solomay Tibabu, the host of the Going Digital Behavioral Health Tech Conference. And today we're gonna to talk about a super important topic, college mental health. I'm so excited to be joined with Ed Gossin, co-founder of Mantra Health. Welcome, Ed. Love to start off by getting a little bit more about your founding story, your background, and a little more about what is Mantra Health. Yeah, thanks, Solomay. Thanks for, thanks for having me and everything you're doing for the ecosystem. I joined this conference last year and it was already a great job. So uh, really excited to be able to join this year as a, as a speaker. Um, yeah, so very quickly, I'm one of three co-founders of Mantra Health, day-to-day uh, -day CEO. Uh, but uh, we started the company about two and a half years ago. And uh, really for me, it stemmed from a, a personal experience like it, it often does. Uh, so by virtue of background, I, I started uh, this career on the operational side, ultimately, uh, became a VC, a VC, which people will say is the good side or, or the bad side of the equation. But uh, ultimately, while, while I was there, um, one of my siblings had to drop out of college due to mental health problems. And so uh, I was able to witness the, the friction in the care uh, and the recovery process. Uh, it sort of led to my conviction that um, a better experience could be built um, when so many other young adults are, are going through this. Um, and so went on a research project. And I think that's the first time you and I got in touch about um, three years ago when I was still at White Star Capital and um, came out with uh, a piece of uh, content on, on my research. Um, ultimately, none of these companies really kind of fit the bill for uh, what we were looking to invest in. But uh, I sort of had this thesis for you know a verticalized clinic that really focused on, on one population is where I saw uh, kind of the space moving overall. Um, came together with Matt Kennedy, uh, who worked uh, at the time at a, at a competing fund. Uh, so Matt uh, had experience operating large tech businesses and, um, you know, came from that world and also uh, being a venture capitalist, which is how we met and met over a beer, decided that, um, you know, we wanted to do this together and then uh, brought on board a third co-founder, Dr. Shah, who, who you also know, um, who's been... Uh, uh, tremendous to have on board. Uh, he really helped us build, you know, the initial protocols uh, and in his capacity as the, the medical director of Columbia University's psychiatry faculty practice. Um, you know, he's brought a lot of knowledge to the table when it comes to uh, building a top class sort of clinical experience for our patients. Um, so that's sort of how the team came together. Uh, initially raised about 3.2 million to get things started, uh, which closed in Q1. Uh, 2019. Um, and uh, yeah, we were off to the races. That's how really things got uh, got started until we we eventually landed, landed on this model of really focusing on, um, on universities as customers. Great. Yeah, I remember that blog post very well and excited that all of you decided to take the plunge because especially with COVID, obviously this is a population that has been impacted so much. Um, in fact, would you mind telling our audience a little bit about what are the gaps today for university students and in, in their mental health and access to care? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just to share a few numbers um, right off the bat, because uh, I think they can be educational. Uh, the rates of diagnoses for depression, anxiety have doubled in the past 10 years on, on college campuses. Um, a year ago, during the pandemic, one in four young adults uh, had reporting feeling suicidal uh, during the pandemic. 24% um, of college students have reported to be on a psychiatric medication in the past year. Uh, and the list goes on. There's more and more surveys coming out. Um, and these numbers are in the estimates. Um, they don't include all the students that are suffering in silence that we see on college campuses, particularly BIPOC and um, LGBT communities. Um, a high percentage of them will have a counseling center on campus that really acts as the gateway to mental health care. And so historically, those have offered long-term care to students. Um, you could come in and uh, not necessarily have the stress of, you know, having a limit of sessions. Um, but with the, with the needs sort of evolving rapidly, they've started referring out to, you know, individual brick and mortar practices uh, in the community. Uh, that's been happening more aggressively, I would say, over the past two, three, four years um, in a model where the counseling center really acts as a triaging system, um, episodic care model, uh, and they implement a, a session limit after which the, the referral happens. Um, where that model becomes complicated is that very few students um, actually make it to that community appointment. So data that we got from some of our partners is that uh, only 40 to 50% of those students actually go there. 
Uh, and it's not surprising when you think about the underlying experience. You know, you're a student, you're on uh, a campus, a lot of those campuses are, are rural. Um, you know, you have to uh, find a means of transportation, uh, go to that appointment. Oftentimes, you know, you'll have to take use your insurance, there may be a copay. Um, and then ultimately, um, you know, there's also the, the issue of the, the wait times, which uh, with the amount of referrals they get can, can be very long. So uh, that experience is, is fairly broken. If the student does uh, make it into care, the school has no idea what's going on, right? So um, if they walk back into the counseling center in crisis, uh, they won't know a thing of what's happened uh, since that referral. Uh, and more and more, they've been looking uh, to sort of scale their resources on campus uh, but it's impossible for them to hire themselves. Uh, it takes time. Um, and a lot of time that there's sort of a limit of talent when it comes to mental health in, in these rural um, areas. And so um, all these signs point to kind of a, a broken experience that, you know, telehealth is kind of, um, you know, perfect to sort of come in and uh, build a model that truly solves their, uh, a lot of their needs. With COVID, how have things changed on college campuses? Yeah, so I mean, from one day to the next, um, schools have had to shut down their their campuses for safety reasons, and uh, telehealth sort of became a, an imperative. They have this existing counseling staff that all of a sudden had to figure out uh, how do we see our students um, when they're going back home and you know studying abroad, and not necessarily only abroad, but also back in their home state. Uh, and so that's been uh, uh, a big uh, a big issue overnight that this, they've had to solve. Um, They've had to rethink how they perform student outreach, um, where they've historically relied on offline channels, um, you know, events they organize on campus to build awareness, to see students in, in person, which was a big, uh, a big selling point. Um, and so, you know, what we saw is that um, there's this huge paradox over the last year where um, even though uh, the needs for mental health around this population uh, have really increased and the diagnoses have skyrocketed, um, the utilization of the counseling centers have also gone down because they're not structurally set up um, to uh, see students over telehealth. A lot of them uh, actually like the experience of going on campus and uh, seeing students face to face. And so um, I think now we're settling into this new normal where they're sort of starting to understand that the future will have to be a blend. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, that's where companies like Mantra come in and we're able to sort of really integrate with um, how they uh, uh, currently run um, their operations on campus. Speaking of Mantra, tell us a little bit about the conditions you typically see amongst college students and what are the large drivers be behind the mental health issues uh, among them? Yeah, so I mean, historically, um, we've predominantly seen you know, depression, anxiety uh, being the most common conditions. I think uh, that's pretty similar across a lot of uh, patient populations. Um, two others that are pretty typical when it comes to college students are, you know, ADHD, um, and eating disorders that uh, yeah, you tend to see uh, quite a bit of. Um, we as a company also treat for bipolar type two. Uh, which has been a common comorbidity for the conditions that um, we treat. But uh, as far as, you know, over the last 12 months uh, with COVID, what's, uh, what's happened is that we've seen a big wave around uh, trauma and the need for trauma-informed care um, being a big specialty that schools are looking for. Um, and uh, if you think about the COVID pandemic, it's really sort of bombarded students uh, with negative experiences that are out of their control, right? So they like contact with their, their friends uh, and often describe themselves as feeling lonely. Uh, they sort of lived with the uncertainty of whether in-person classes were happening versus going online. Uh, they had to, again, vacate their, their dorms, which was probably a very stressful experience um, for some campuses. It really happened overnight. Um, and also they worry about finances if, you know, themselves, their parents have lost their jobs. Um, and so, um, what's worse is that they, they can also fear getting COVID from roommates or giving it to their parents when they go back home. Um, and so I couldn't imagine being a college student during this, uh, during this time. Um, and, um, yeah, loss is probably the biggest stressor that, that we all face with this pandemic. Right. Um, and so again, I think this population, uh, amongst any other has seen, um, uh, some of the most traumatic, uh, experiences that you can, 
uh, possibly go through as, a, as an 18 to 22 year old in these formative years. Um, and more than ever, we're seeing schools kind of try to think about um, how they can address this issue. Yes, now more than ever, as much as I've said that on every session, but really COVID has had such a huge impact on everyone, but what a totally different college experience for so many. Um, I have to ask, what is it unique about what Mantra does to really serve this population? Why couldn't say many general telehealth platforms do what you're doing for college students? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And I think our, our customers will be uh, doing a better job of saying uh, why they've gone with Mantra and why, why they've decided to, to stick with Mantra ahead of next year versus uh, going with more generalist platforms. I think our initial thesis when we started the company is that um, a lot of these more generalist telehealth platforms uh, sort of came out of, uh, you know, telehealth 1.0, where uh, the idea of putting um, a provider um, and a patient behind a digital interface was sufficient uh, to sort of capture the demand for telehealth, which pre-COVID was obviously uh, still very nascent. Um, I think that with new modalities coming out, content, community, um, applications of artificial intelligence and, and more data that we're collecting on patients, um, there's been sort of this opportunity of saying, how do we take all of these different modalities and package them uh, to better treat specific populations? Uh, mental health is not black or white. Um, and uh, if you look at, um, you know, an 18 year old versus someone that's going through, you know, a geriatric psychiatric experience uh, versus, you know, an inmate in prison that um, is going through his own issues. Um, you know, there are so many, um, you know, walks of life uh, and underlying problems that, that you can see even that if you look at the realm of college mental health, I think it'll take a lot for Mantra to be able to uh, really provide the best care experience. Uh, but uh, the, the thesis is this, that uh, by uh, really contextualizing the care that we're providing, uh, we can you know, offer a 10x improvement over um, any other provider group that just sort of looks at you know, populations at large. Um, and so we do that, first of all, by having a, a software ecosystem to really enable the, the collaborative care that's needed uh, with college campuses. Again, they have these counseling centers um, and uh, they act as the gateway to mental health. So you can't win this space without thinking about how you work with them. Uh, for us, it starts with this collaboration portal, which is really a workflow integration tool that um, we deploy on, on campus clinics. It allows them to seamlessly refer students into care with Mantra and then have access to uh, medical notes over the course of care, which we're able to do because we've built our own EHR from the ground up uh, to enable the collaboration uh, with the on-campus providers. Uh, and then lastly, you know, the third and most important uh, stakeholder of that uh, care team is the patient. Uh, and so we really built um, our patient portal to, again, integrate with the on-campus resources. Uh, and over time, we'll be launching more and more features so that, um, you know, we can contextualize the care that we provide uh, to college students. Um, and part of that is through having our own provider group. Um, and so all the providers that we hire are screened uh, to have this holistic care philosophy, a passion for treating young adults, um, and ultimately, you know, go through a pretty thorough process uh, that we screen for um, so that we make sure that uh, we have the best providers across the country that uh, focus on treating this population. And if they want to see them, um, they'll uh, work with, uh, with Mantra. Super helpful. Thanks so much. You mentioned providers a couple times. So... <sighs> the provider recruitment landscape is getting increasingly competitive. What's been Mantra's approach for attracting and retaining great providers? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, I think uh, if, uh, you know, behavioral health companies had the, the answer, we, uh, uh, there would be a lot less competition within um, the, the landscape. But uh, honestly, uh, I think for us, it comes down to, we're lucky to have a model where um, we're actually bringing in a sense of community uh, when it comes to working with uh, these on-campus clinics. And so that's something that doesn't happen if you're just working for, again, a, a generalist telehealth platform where when we interview some of these providers that have worked with them in the past, it, sometimes it can sort of feel like click medicine where you're just going from uh, one appointment to, to another. And so uh, I think for us, you know, from day one, we've thought, how do we, how do we leverage this idea of 
uh, the providers that we hire being part of a care team with the schools. And so uh, they uh, uh, actually, you know, have access to, again, the protocols of the school whenever we deploy on campuses, uh, build a sense of relationship with them, and they're part of a, a bigger mission. Um, and I think, uh, again, it's one thing to say, I'm going to be a behavior, a behavior health provider that works for um, a telehealth company and seeing patients every day. And, you know, you're just looking at it as numbers and the caseload. Uh, with Mantra, you're, again, sp specifically focusing on trying to solve the needs for a population where there's a, a crisis happening. Um, and so, you know, that's a, a mission that providers want to get behind and get excited about. So for us, again, we, we've been able to, to really leverage that. Um, I think removing the admin burden is something that's huge as well. Um, so again, building a, an experience in our EHR uh, that uh, our providers love is a, a big focus for our product and uh, engineering team. And we continue to build upon those strengths. Um, and then the last one is, again, continuously trying to innovate on, on compensation models. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, again, there, there's a constant uh, uh, improvement that's, that's needed on thinking about um, how do we move away from a world of, you know, constant just fee-for-service to trying to think about ways that are more um, innovative to, to incentivize better, better care. So um, that's just some of the things that, that we're doing as a company, and we're really seeing our provider group as, a, as an asset for the future. Great. And now let's talk about some of the schools you're working with. How are you able to solve some of their problems? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll use one of the use cases that comes to mind, um, and that's our, our largest customer today. Um, so we're working with, with Penn State um, across um, all of their campuses. Um, so Penn State has about 20 campuses scattered across Pennsylvania. Um, and um, uh, historically, they've all been referring into uh, uh, individual um, psychiatric brick and mortar practices. And so Again, if you think about uh, the, the student experience, um, you know, you're on one of the satellite campuses of Penn State uh, that's most likely in a rural area. You get referred into a provider that takes two hours to, to travel to, and ultimately, um, you know, you see very little collaboration between your psychiatric provider and the therapist on, on campus that you're also seeing. Um, and what's more, you know, they sort of take this approach where uh, there's a level of supervision and a level of standardization that they're trying to create through University Park, which is their main campus. Um, and so uh, their, their director, Dr. Luck, who's extremely forward thinking has uh, for the longest time been trying to find solutions to uh, provide better care across um, not just the, the main campus, but all these satellite campuses as well. Uh, I think what they found in Mantra is a way to um, you know, build uh, really a, a focused solution on psychiatric care. And so we have the flexibility to offer um, different care programs where um, all the campuses are, are now referring to the same, same psychiatric care team with Mantra that's now collaborating with um, all these individual, uh, you know, clinics on, on the satellite campuses that um, are seeing the same providers um, and ultimately uh, deeply collaborating so that they're part of the, the wider care team. Um, and then thanks to our reporting dashboards, uh, the counseling center on uh, the main campus can now see, you know, what conditions are we treating uh, for this population, how many students are active in care, um, and a whole lot of other data points that um, they had no visibility on in the past. Um, and so uh, it's really been a home run. We now have, um, you know, a set of others, you know, large um, state systems and, and large schools um, that are similar so that um, we can take the learnings from this year and uh, and keep scaling as a uh, as a provider group and, and a partner to these schools. Great. And is there a specific school type that you really cater to? Yeah, so we really cater to schools of all shapes and sizes. It's interesting. I think the biggest um, difference that we see is, I think, schools that um, have a counseling center or schools that don't. Um, so specifically within community colleges, um, a lot of them... Uh, don't have a, a counseling center. We work with um, St. Petersburg College in Florida. Um, so I think 50 or 57,000 students enrolled. Um, and, um, you know, historically, they've been relying on, on different sort of legacy SAP solutions or uh, community providers to work with. Um, and, um, you know, with Mantra, we've really sort of come in and, and acted as that virtual counseling center for them, um, which is kind of a different approach uh, to what we've done with other 
you know, more resource um, campuses. And uh, again, it's been, uh, it's been a tremendous first year with them. Uh, we've uh, been really excited to support the needs of community colleges. Um, so there's really different use cases. Again, our goal and our mission is to really be the, that company that uh, can partner with, um, with all of them. Wow, well, as you said earlier, um, this college age is uh, a common age for some onset for um, some mental illness. And it just seems like amazing work you're doing. I wish I had this resource in college. I still feel like I'm 21, but <laughs> a while ago and what a different situation it is, uh, I can tell already. Yeah. So, but let's talk about future in terms of long-term vision. Where do you see the company in three to five years from now? Yeah, I think uh, we're going to keep having the same approach that we've done so far is to really continue to grow with our customers. Um, as a company, we um, strive off of uh, having very collaborative relationships with them and understanding what, what their needs are. Um, and so we're going to keep uh, using that mentality to scale. Um, and, uh, you know, honestly, they're, they're our best uh, member of the product team. Um, and so we continue to um, assess their needs. And I think you're going to see Mantra building you know, more and more digital and clinical products um, to uh, focus on the needs of, of schools. And we're going to continue partnering with universities. There's tremendous, tremendous depth um, in this market, uh, even though, of course, you have a finite amount of, of customers. Um, there's a lot of schools in, uh, in the U.S. And, um, you know, I think there's a, a venture scale business to be built if, uh, you know, we're going to be the sort of number one virtual mental health clinic focused on universities and colleges. So, uh, we're really going to keep focusing on that. Um, one particular point that, again, Mont where Mantra stands out versus um, um, other platforms um, focused on colleges and universities is um, our uh, ability to work with health plans. Um, and so we've announced that earlier in the year, but we're now in network with some of the biggest carriers in the country, uh, which really enables us to solve one of the biggest issues on college campuses, which is that uh, continuity of care when you go back to um, uh, you know, your, your, your home uh, in between school years and after you graduate, uh, sort of uh, getting into another um, stage in, in your life. And so uh, historically, you know, students haven't had this uh, support system uh, where they've had to figure it out on their own. Um, and so uh, with Mantra, students can actually transition into care seamlessly uh, with their insurance, uh, converting to self-pay if they don't have insurance. Um, and, you know, continuing to think about how we make that bridge to continue working with the student after graduation is um, how we want to think about the, the future as well. Um, so, so much to do, but uh, I think that uh, companies often fail by trying to do too much. And so uh, we're focused on going fast uh, within the, the narrow focus that we sort of picked and found a uh, product market fit in. Yes, well... You certainly have your work cut out for yourselves in terms of student mental health. Um, this has been really insightful. Thank you so much, Ed, for sharing and congrats on all of the success of Mantra thus far. Thank you, Salome.